Hello there and welcome to Grow A Lot More. So as you can see up on our dahlia decking, uh, all of our dahlias are starting to go over. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop these back and hopefully get an extra flourish of flowers towards the end of August, beginning of September uh, and enjoy those right up until the first frosts in October, November time. So we're just going to cut them back, going back to the join. and you can remove the dead flowers. You can also tell when they're spent, when they go into a point, um, and when they're ready to flower, they're in a rounded box shape. So while I get on with this, let's have a look to see what's coming up in today's program. We're going to show you how to plant late potatoes ready for Christmas. We'll be looking at jobs to do in August. We'll be looking at the best flowers at this time of year. We'll be showing you how to grow strawberry plants from the runners. We'll be looking at what you can harvest. We'll be looking at the pests and diseases in August. And we'll be looking to see what there is to sow and grow. So here we have second early potatoes. These are called Marfona um, and they've actually succumbed to blight. So what happens is, is that it actually kills off the stems, kills off the foliage. Um, however, it doesn't really affect the tubers underneath the ground. So um, these are second earlies, but also can be used as main crop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the potatoes back down to the ground and remove these stems. They are actually quite dry, so the potatoes underneath should actually be okay and ready to harvest. So we'll just take that out. And you've got to be careful, make sure that this doesn't go onto the compost, as it will transfer the fungal disease potentially into next year's crop. So that will have to be burned probably later on in the year. So once you've removed all of the stems and um, then you can start to actually take up some of the potatoes so either using a little trowel or even using a fork um, you can just start to work it down and just being careful and mindful not to actually stab or penetrate the potato I quite like to just use my hands and they should just start to form and pull away. Now, I don't expect a large harvest from this lot because uh, it is actually under a tree, so most of the nutrients and water has been taken up, but has actually given us some quite nice potatoes. They're quite decent sized Marfona. Um, they can be quite susceptible to disease, so this has actually got a little bit of scab on it but um, the scab you can just quite easily remove that just with a peeler so it is really fun to harvest your own potatoes and you'll always be surprised at what you'll find so I'm just gonna dig this lot over and find out exactly how much we've got And then we have our lovely Marfona potatoes. It's about four kilos in weight. I'm actually really quite surprised at how well they've done, um, especially considering they have a tree here. Um, and they've actually got some quite decent sizes. But it's not the end of the potato season because I'm gonna be showing you now how to sow some late varieties in tubs.
And here we have tubs in all shapes and sizes. Um, some larger ones, some very small ones, some slightly taller ones, and then some that are actually purpose built for potatoes, and then some recycling as well. So you can also do late harvest varieties in compost bags, uh, the same bags that you just get compost in. So um, you can use the plastic bag as well. But um, I'm just gonna be doing it in this recycled tub. And what I've done is I've put some crocs, which is basically just broken up plastic pots that I don't need anymore, uh, just to cover some of the holes. You do need to make sure you do have drainage at the bottom. Um, that's so the tubers don't sit in water and end up rotting. Um, and it's particularly important during this time of year because of course uh, we're going into more of a rainier season. Now, what we're gonna do is gonna fill this bucket up to about quarter way up and then we're gonna put in the tubers. And I've got a variety here. Um, I particularly like this variety. They're called Nicola. Um, they are fantastic waxy new potatoes and these will be ready to harvest in about October time. So perfect um, for just before uh, everything starts to set in, all the cold weather starts to set in um, and it's really good um, to have those fresh new potatoes towards Christmas time. So just be careful, um, especially this one because it's got a net around it and we don't want to remove the eyes. And the eyes is this growth part and this is where the stems will grow. They'll photosynthesize, get all the nutrients they need um, and effectively then will create your tubers. Now, these are actually quite small. So these can be spaced probably about 10, 10 centimeters apart. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna place the eyes so they face upwards. Um, and this bucket will hold at least three, if not potentially four, um, within this bucket. Um, and all you've got to do is put the soil in. So a really nice multi-purpose compost. Just fill it up until it's about quarter away. Maybe a little bit less than that. About quarter away. There we are. That's your compost in. And again, just make sure that these eyes are facing upwards when you plant them in. So three in the container. And then just top it up with soil. And don't go all the way to start off with. You wanna probably go about halfway at the bucket. And then you give them a nice water, just so it really gives them a good start. And then when you start to see some growth, like this one here, um, when it gets to about, maybe about two inches tall, you do exactly the same as what you would do with your early, second and main crop, is you just earth them up. And that just protects the tuber underneath and gives growth to more as well. So, like I said, you'll be expecting to harvest these types of potatoes um, in late October, beginning of November, effectively when the frost hit. Um, and if it is particularly cold, the best thing to do is to plant them in pots because you can move them into a greenhouse, into a shed, so that frost doesn't hit them and effectively your tubers will keep on growing. Now they're not gonna be as plentiful as a, um, an early summer or main crop variety, um, but you will get a fairly decent crop. Um, I'll be hopefully expecting about a kilo to a kilo and a half for this particular tub. So hopefully, um, all being well, we'll have new potatoes for Christmas. Now that's one job that you can be getting on with in August. Let's have a look at some more. It's the perfect time to cut back your lavender to stop it from going woody. Use bamboo canes to make a framework. Place cans or pots over the end to prevent the mesh from slipping down. Place the netting over the top. This is ideal for keeping pigeons and birds and butterflies off of your brassicas. 
it's really important that you water now as the temperature starts to increase. Try to use as much rainwater as possible. Water and feed pots regularly. And if you can, try to give acidic plants rainwater. Thin any crops. Harvest any fruit that needs to be eaten. Harvest seeds like nigella, foxgloves and calendula now. Lay out onions on a surface and let them dry for a few hours and then store. Complete any weeding. Keep on top of maintenance, this will really help. Don't harvest any rhubarb, let the energy go back into the ground. And here we have Rubecchia Goldstrom. It's produced a lot of flowers this year. It came from very small plants last year, but it's established itself really well. It likes uh, not too fertile soil and actually on slightly on the heavy side, but it produces amazing flowers in August time. These will continue to flower, hopefully right up until October and until the first frosts. But this is one thing that's flowering well in August. Let's have a look at some others. At the back here, we have our strawberry run. Uh, it's done really well this year. The variety is Cambridge, and it's starting to put runners out, which is fine. Um, it means that the energy, though, is going away from the plant and into new plants off side shoots. And this variety is re cropped really well for the past uh, two years. So its third season is next year, um, and after that, it becomes less productive. So Rather than me buying new plants, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually utilise the runners and get them to establish as new plants. So what I want to do is, this one's produced some nice root growth down the bottom um, and I don't particularly want it going into this area. Um, you could just pin them down within the area that the runner's sending them out in, which is absolutely fine if you've got the space. Um, however, I really don't. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use a pot filled with multi-purpose compost and I'm going to be pushing the root system into that pot and I want to hold it there. Um, so you can either use like a peg or something with a U shape where you can pin, pin the runner down. So that means the roots will then establish in the pot. And then once the roots have established, I can then cut the runners uh, and then transfer that plant to anywhere that I'd like. Now, like I said, you can use a pin or like a U-shaped uh, piece of equipment. However, I quite like to use just a twig. So I've, what I've done is I've just bent the twig in half, so it's still connected, 
and then I just pin that into place so it holds it in the pot and then I just leave that to set root. I've really enjoyed the strawberries this year from Cambridge and hopefully I'll enjoy them again next year. But let's have a look to see what else you can harvest in August. And here we have some lupin seeds that I'm going to harvest. So I can sow these actually from any, anywhere between February to September. So I'll be sowing these in September and hopefully going to plant these out towards uh, the beginning of spring, late spring. So I'm just going to cut them back and these are ready because you can hear them rattle like a rattlesnake. So once these have properly dried out uh, in the shed or greenhouse, I'll then look to sow these, uh, like I said, in September time. So these are the one things that you can sow now. So let's have a look at some others that you can do in August. It's the perfect time to start planting out any lettuce that you might have sown last month. We're planting out two lettuces, Lola Rossa, which is a firm favourite, and a new variety called Arctic King. Just make sure that when you plant them, that you also water them really well so the plants get established. So here we have an example of tomato blight um, and you can actually see just in here where the stems have actually started to turn brown um, and it's really important that you actually cut these back. Um, you don't, I don't really suffer with it in the greenhouse, you can do. Um, I always suffer from it from outside. I tried to give these a go this year. Um, this particular variety is Garden Delight and it's actually started to affect the fruits as well. So this will need to be taken down. Um, you can't put it in your compost heap because then you'll pass it on uh, to future crops. So you'll need to take it down, dry it out, and then I burn it around the 5th of November. So we're just gonna take this down in stages, I think. And once you've actually removed the foliage, just make sure that you actually disinfect any tools that you've used, because again, you can actually pass on disease through that way. So this is one of the diseases which is rife at this time of year, uh, but let's have a look at some more diseases and some pests, and one particular unusual one in this part of the country.
This time of year is really typical for fungal diseases due to the high humidity and temperatures. This really can affect tomatoes and potatoes through blight, but also powdery mildew for plants like courgettes. Remove any diseased apples from the tree to stop it from spreading. Keep removing slugs and snails. Bindweed is a particular problem on our site. Just keep cutting it down to the ground and pulling out as much as possible. Pigeons are very familiar on our site, as well as these parakeets. They really do love to eat the soft fruit. If you place something like silver tape in the tree, this might actually prevent them from eating your crops. So here we are picking some absolutely amazing blackberries. Really big and juicy. However, this is gonna take me quite a while. So thank you very much for coming along today. And hopefully we'll see you again on Grow A Lot More in September. And please, if you'd like to, please subscribe down the bottom. Um, and we are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr. So if you'd like to join us on those platforms, you can also follow us through those. But thank you very much, and I shall see you in September.